and welcome back to Song Surveys on Sopas with Superheroes, the sub-series. So this is the last one of the year, which is just totally mind-blowing. I'm excited and sad and definitely looking forward to see what next year brings, but the official year-long 52-week sub-series is ended after this video, which again is definitely bittersweet. So this song is by a band that definitely was super underestimated. I really would have loved them to make it huge. They were a fantastic band. I loved this album pretty much from start to finish, but this song in particular was definitely the song that I referenced the most. I sign a lot and tend to just get stuck on my head often, especially like in those moments where I'm kind of like not paying attention and then all of a sudden I'm like, why do I have this song stuck in my head? So this is definitely a song that I've listened to and loved for a very, very long time. So the song is Boxcar by Stairwell and let's get into it. So it starts with two strums of the guitar and um, pretty simple percussion before the lyrics kick in, like pretty much right away. And so for the first half of both verses, the music is fairly simple. So you get that consistent percussion and occasional guitar strums and like sets of two. So you get like percussion, sets of two, strums of the guitar, the percussion is still going, and then you get those two strums, percussion continues, and then you get like a string of like seven or eight notes together, and then it goes back to just the percussion, you get those two strums. So that's pretty much the first half of both verses. Um, and so yeah, so I really like the lines in the first verse are, the world is ending, most of the people don't even know. And so I like these lines because it's just two lines, but they say so, so much, right? It kind of touches on how unaware people can be and even going into like being selfish and kind of in your own head and thinking that your problems are bigger than, than maybe things that are really happening in the world. So yeah, so I think that's like definitely interesting that people are kind of not paying attention to things around them and all of that is said in just those two lines. So I really like those two lines in particular, but then I also love, <laughs> it's a box car with alterations to make us go faster in a fast world. So that's the only time the title is in the song. But I also love it because I think whenever I hear boxcar, I think of like the old timey trains with like the doors that are open and you get like those hobos with the little stick and the little pouch on the back that's tied to it and so I don't know I just it made me think of that immediately and so I just kind of love the idea of this like promise or hope in getting on that boxcar you know you're thinking to yourself okay well I'm like escaping I'm running away this is a, a new beginning for me and like it's just kind of moving on from what is in the past and then the idea that that's ruined by these alterations that are now just gonna make you go faster in this already fast world that you were kind of trying to run away from and get away from. So I really like that idea. And I think that's definitely an interesting concept. Now I have no idea if that was the intention, but that's what it makes me think of. So that's what I really like about it. So after that line in particular for this first verse, you get the second half of the verse, which the music does change. So um, the percussion and guitar changes, it definitely becomes guitar, guitar changes, it definitely becomes more full. And um, again, this change happens in both verses. And then so after the verse is finished, the music changes again, and you get um, some serious tambourine for the ver for the chorus, which I love, and um, definitely like a different guitar sound for sure. Um, so yeah, so I really like that, especially for the first half of the chorus. So again, the verses are kind of separated into two different halves based on instrumentals as well as the chorus that happens with the chorus as well. So um, so yeah, so in the first half, which is this tambourine heavy music, there's a lot of repetition. So the first three lines are repeated twice in the chorus, but not only are the first three lines repeated, when those lines are repeated, the second line is repeated right after the second line is saying. So it goes line one, line two, line two, line three, line one, line two, line two, line three. But the second time, so the last line is, or the third line I should say in the chorus, is that's pointed at me. And so for the second repetition of that line, you don't really get the last 
two words because it goes right into the second half of the chorus, which I think was really, really smart, especially because um, the first, sorry, the last line, kind of the word at can like seamlessly transitions into the next part of the chorus. So I think that was a really smart choice again. And, and it makes that one repetition not sound super similar, which as we've learned this year, I love. So yeah, so that's a good choice. So the lines in the second half of the chorus are, and then possibly, I could be wrong, I don't know, that's what the um, thing said, and I tried to listen to it over and over again, and I think that's what I heard, but um, please let me know if you know if it's any different. So anyway, sorry. And then the crowd starts to look my way, I'm acting like nothing is wrong, but I shouldn't care, keep on living life with my own style. So really love the conjunction but in that part, I think the fact that it's a statement of what should be happening instead of what is actually happening is great, right? So this person is at like the point in this song or the point when the song was made or being sung. They're like, I know that like I am doing my own style, but I still kind of care what people think and I just shouldn't. So I love that they're not there yet. I like that there is definitely some like growth that could take place. But I also just love but because they're basically saying like, I sh like, I'm acting like nothing's wrong. I mean, maybe I should just act like it's wrong, right? Because that's who I am. Like, so it might be wrong for you, but it's who I am. So I just should stop like acting like nothing is wrong. So I really like that. I think that that conjunction was well placed. And I think that that was really cool and definitely makes that second half of the chorus great for me. I really liked that part. Um, after that part of the chorus, the second half, the music drops completely. Like there's no sound for like two seconds. Um, and you know, it kind of like leads up to the nothingness. You get these three like hits slash strums of instrument. And then there's like two full solid seconds of silence, which again, I think is a really good effect because it definitely kind of draws your attention. You're like, oh wait, what is this break? And then all of a sudden the next verse starts. So I really like that. I thought that was a good part of the song and definitely a good idea. Um, so yeah, I am not gonna lie. I always thought and will still probably always sing it this way. But I always thought that the second line in the second verse was with their critics disease. But apparently it's with their critics and zines, which totally makes more sense. And I get that. But I guess in my head, I just kind of liked the idea that that everyone in this location is so critical that it's actually become like a sickness like it actually makes everyone kind of like almost like contagious like oh I don't want to like be near you I don't know I just kind of liked that idea that maybe just being too critical was a disease so again just like one of those misheard lyrics but I kind of like my version a little bit better but okay so um but I really love signing pretty much most of the second verse of this song. Um, <laughs> I probably definitely don't do it correctly, but the two lines in particular that I really do love the most are with their glasses and their beautiful clothes, and then um, trying to buy what you can't afford. I love, love signing those. Think again, those are like the lines that I go to often when I think of this song, especially the glasses and their beautiful clothes. I love that line. <laughs> I don't know why that line particularly. Love it, love it, love signing it. But if I had to pick lines in the second verse that were like impactful in terms of um, like creating space to think, it would definitely have to be um, the last few lines in the verse, which are, there is a pool full of their language. It's getting serious. It's time to swim out the door. Love, love, love the figurative language so much. Just love it. Um, I think it's like brilliant to, you know, have this pool and then you need to swim out the door, which pools don't have doors. So I kind of, again, I like the idea of like really kind of anything filled with language, I think is interesting concept um, because there is really nothing like filled with language. You know, like, is it like words that you see in your head or is it books or I don't know, I just, or, or things that are like, would be part of that language. I don't know, I just really like the concept of that. 
And then on top of that, like it gets so bad to a point where you can't just walk out anymore. You actually have to swim through it. So I really love that. I think it was great and definitely gives my head a lot to think about and, and just kind of imagine about. So I really like that part of this, the second verse. Um, so then the music shifts again and you get the chorus with pretty much no changes. So you get those repetition part, the first half, and then you get the second half. So pretty much like right as the chorus ends, you get this woo <laughs> and um, the music transitions right into the bridge from that part. And it's so super country sounding and not like country song, but almost like dude ranch sounding. And I don't know if that makes any sense whatsoever, but this part of the song always is very country to me. <laughs> And it's funny because I don't really like country music, but this like one part of the song has such a good buildup. Because what happens is it starts with just like a guitar and simple percussion. And then you get this like more complex percussion and then you get bass, which is added. And then you get this other guitar part. So like the buildup is pretty fantastic, but that initial guitar is just like, so dude ranchy. I don't know if that's even a term, but I'm making it one because that's what it reminds me of. It makes me think of when I hear it. Um, and then right after that part, right when the instruments are building, you get um, like a, like baas and ooze kind of all like in this great way. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not explaining that very well. Um, and then you get, you you got it, you got it, you got it, yeah, which is, you got it is part of the um, chorus. So that, you get the three repetitions of that, which then takes you into a shift in music and back into the first three lines of the chorus, which are repeated twice. And then you get into the actual chorus, right? So those three lines, well, so it's technically four, right? Because that second line is repeated twice. So those first half of the chorus is actually repeated twice before you get the second half of the chorus in the end of the song, which again, is like a lot of repetition. Um, so definitely interesting that I still enjoy this part of the song because at this point I've heard the chorus, like this is the third time you're hearing the chorus with no change in it, other than more of the same thing being repeated. Um, but yeah, so that's definitely something to like be thoughtful about in terms of why I still love the song, even though that happens. Um, and yeah, so then you get this like quick, sorry, so you get the repeat of the chorus. So you get those repeat of the first half, full chorus repeated, and then you get this like quick musical transition that definitely has some notes from the bridge for like a quick couple seconds. And then they repeat the last two lines of the chorus, which is the, but I shouldn't care. I keep on living life with my own style. And then they kind of just play a couple more notes and then they get this like one massive like strum and that's it. And the song is over. So yeah, please let me know what you think. Um, let me know what you think about the whole year in general. I should definitely feel like I should make a playlist of all the songs I did on Spotify, which I might do and then put on my um, link into my Twitter account. But um, yeah, so follow, like, subscribe. Please let me know what you think. <laughs> um, comment and I love to hear it. Uh, any new songs or people you're particularly looking forward to coming out in 2020. I cannot wait for new music so I'm sure you will see me on the sofa again at some point soon because there's so much new music coming out and that has already come out that I would love to share with you guys. So please comment. Have a wonderful New Year's and yeah I hope you enjoyed this year of sub-series. <laughs> All right bye guys.